an object passes a checkpoint and the timing begins. The velocity of the object is given by this function v is for velocity is given by this function which is 50 minus 2.5 t where t is time in seconds and v is velocity in meters per seconds. So this is in second time is in seconds and velocity is meters per second. How many seconds will go by before the object passes the checkpoint again? So this seems to be an object which is oscillating. I don't know. The the function of velocity is given to be 50 minus 2.5 t. So let's understand velocity. You have learned velocity, uh, which is a vector quantity, is change in distance or change in time. Okay, so the velocity is a gradient. Okay, that's one thing that you should understand. So this is velocity is a gradient function, or the same thing in calculus is written as ds by dt, where this is this is average velocity, this is average velocity, and ds by dt, s in calculus is used for distance or displacement, is uh, ds is an infinitesimally small displacement, and dt is an infinitesimally small change in time. So this is called in calculus, the same thing, not the same thing, it's different, it's instantaneous velocity, okay? So that is a velocity at a given instant, okay? Which can be a microsecond uh, if an object is continuously changing. Here the velocity is, uh, velocity is, co uh, is constantly changing here, okay? The velocity is 50 minus 2.5 t. So if you make a table, you can see this, this would be a straight line. So at each time, when time is zero, from this equation you can say it has a velocity of 50. When time is one, or time is two, or after two seconds, it will be 50 minus five, because 2.5 times two is five, so it will be 45 meters per second. Okay, so if velocity is ds by dt, so let me write this, so if velocity is ds by dt, integration is the opposite of differentiation. This implies if you integrate velocity with respect to time, you get distance, which is s. Okay, so this is one concept uh, you have to understand very clearly. Okay, So velocity is a gradient function of differentiating distance with respect to time. So conversely, if you integrate velocity with respect to time, you get distance. Okay, so uh, the question is, we want to find after how many seconds will it pass the object, uh, the checkpoint again. So let's uh, write, so we can say, we know that uh, S is integration of V dt. So V uh, or velocity V is 50 minus 2.5 t. So this is 50 minus 2.5 t dt. So we would integrate this individually. Okay. Uh, okay. So what can we do now? So uh, we can say integrating this individually. So this is integration of 50 t to the power 0 dt. I'm uh, distributing this integration dt to both. You can distribute this like this. Minus 2.5, minus 2.5, 2.5 t to the power 1 dt. Okay, so integrating this, so in integration what do you do? You increase the power by 1 and divide by the same power. So the power of t, this is 1, t to the power 0 is 1. So 50, I can write as 50 t to the power 0. So 50 t to the power 1 over 1 minus 2.5 t squared divided by 2 plus c, which is a constant of integration. So s as a function of t is 50 t and 2.5 divided by 2 is 1.25 t squared plus c. Now, C is a constant of integration. So what information do we have? 
the object passes through a checkpoint and the timing begins. Now this is a very crucial sentence. This means when time is zero, when time is zero, your distance is how much? Your distance is zero. The object has covered zero distance. So we can put this back in this equation. So we can say zero is equal to 50 times zero minus 1.25, 1 1.25 times zero squared plus zero, plus c, sorry, plus c. So this is zero, this is zero. Okay, so this implies c is also zero. Okay, so c is equal to zero. So let's put this back. So we can say, well, uh, s as a function of time is 50t minus 1.25t squared. Okay, so now the question is, when does it come back to the checkpoint again? Okay, so if this is the function of distance in terms of time, the question is, when is s zero? Okay, we know when t is zero, it is zero. When is it zero? When is the distance becoming zero? So you can understand this is a quadratic function. So I have to put, uh, we, this is something that we know. This is when time is zero, your distance is zero. So the next question is when s is zero, what time does it come back to the checkpoint? So this is a question mark. So I'm going to put zero in this quadratic equation. So this becomes zero is equal to 50t minus 1.25t squared. So let us solve this. We have to solve the simple quadratic equation. So what can you factorize? So well, I can factor out the t. You can factor out the t. So you have 50 minus 1.25t. Okay, so now this is simple quadratic, so you can say t is equal to zero, that, that's something that we already know, and the other is 50 minus 1.25t is equal to zero. Okay, so let's solve this. So this means 50 is equal to 1.25t, and dividing both sides by 1.25, so divide this by 1.25, so you can also divide this side by 1.25. So t is 50 divided by 1.25. So let's use the calculator. Okay, so this is my calculator menu run 50 divided by 1.25. Okay, which is after 40 seconds. After 40 seconds, the object comes back to the uh, the stationary point, uh, to the starting point. Let's understand this graphically. Now, this is your function with respect to time, and this is a upside-down parabola. So, let me graph this. Let us graph it. So, uh, so the maximum at time zero, uh, what would be the distance? At time zero, it would be zero. Okay, so let us type in. So this is 50x minus 1.25x squared. Okay, I want time from, I need to change the scale from 0 to, this is a quadratic equation, so let, it, let me go up to 50. Okay, scale of 2, and I'll go, on y-axis I'll go from 0 to 100 and see what happens. 100 may not be needed, scale of 2. Oh, this is too small, so let me make it, say, let me make it uh, to, or say, 300. Scale of 10, and see what happens. Oh, this is again too small, okay? So, you can check, so, G solve and root, okay? When time is 0, when X is 0, Y is 0. So, the other is, when X is, zero, X is 40, your distance is 0. Okay, I would like you to look at this example, which is again related to the previous example. I'll give you a hint here. Here what's given is, an object is moving in a straight line through a reference point P. When the object passes through point P, it is traveling at 6 centimeters per second. 
and the timing begins. Okay, so what does this mean? So this means, this sentence means, uh, when t is zero, when t is zero, the velocity is six centimeters per second. Six centimeters per second. Okay, and when t is zero, and the timing begins means your distance, when t is zero, two things are given in this sentence, first sentence. When t is zero, well, how much is the distance covered? Your distance is also zero, yeah. So two things are given. Your acceleration is given to be 40 minus 13. Now acceleration, if you have understood velocity, acceleration is change in. So acceleration you have learned is change in velocity, change in velocity over change in time, over change in time. So the same thing in calculus or in physics, in time. So acceleration is again a gradient function, which is ds by dt, which is ds by dt. So I want you to do this yourself. So what does this mean? If acceleration is ds by dt, sorry, dv by dt, sorry, it's not this change in distance, it's change in velocity, so dv by, if acceleration is dv by dt, this implies when you integrate acceleration with respect to time, you get velocity. Plus, of course, the c, the constant of uh, the co the constant of integration. And then, from when you integrate velocity, you'll get distance. Try to do this yourself and try to get the answer.